this is a timber frame, and this, it's a, essentially one big skeleton for the house. Uh, the way it's organized is in a series of what are called bents, which are assemblies that I kind of liken to slices of bread. Each one is pretty much the same as the other one. It's got rafters, which are sloped, which will pick up the roof. It's got posts, which are vertical, which will pick up the walls. And it's got beams, which are horizontal, which will pick up the floors. one of the vents and this is sort of the riskiest and most uh, exciting shall we say part of the process it's also the hardest on the timbers instead of lying flat or standing vertically they're under a dynamic stress and so there's concern that the joints aren't going to hold We've raised the second bent, we the first one went up, and now the second one, and to fit them together we have to have horizontal members that connect the two. Once we do that we'll have a much more rigid frame. But it's tricky because they both have inside, inside ends, so what they've done is they've leaned out the second one a little bit, just enough so to work the timbers in, and then they're going to squeeze it back together. And I guess they just continue to do that down the line, is the the, the newest one to come up will just be leaned out just a little bit to, to pick them together. I've always been curious about how you get this perfectly fitted puzzle to fit together as you put it up. Watch your knees. I have to come down a tiny bit. I'll bring down the, uh, it's the brace, it's because the beam is rolled. Right. It's sitting on the brace housing right here. Yeah. Tap on it with your hammer now. Yeah, there it goes. Here you go, Chris. Yeah, I did it. What's Big Red? Big Red is the persuader. The persuader. Another name. It's a big. Uh, it's our sledgehammer. Sledgehammer. And why do we need Big Red? Is this every job needs it, right? Every it's job kind of like duct it. tape, right? It's a very important every, tool. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, part of our toolkit is what we call persuasion, and it has to do with the come alongs, which you see all over the frame. So a come along pulls things together, yep. right? Come along is a, a big cable on a lever that right. uh, pulls things together. We got big red to kind of bang joints into place. And uh, and how come they don't just sort of fall into place? Just because it's, the nature, it's wood, the it's nature of wood, yeah, it's weather. twists and yeah. swells. And... You know, it's always going to take a little tune up. It's mm -hmm. just how much. And like Chris was saying, you know, we cut it in the shop in a controlled environment and then we bring it out here and we've been out here the whole week. Yeah. Just ambient moisture in the air, you know, the wood is still soaking that up through yeah. the grain. Yeah. And uh, it swells, it shrinks. But this wood was, was vacuum killed, right? So right. that it should be, I mean, completely dry. It should be very, dry. very stable. Right. It's not going to be totally dry. Okay. I mean, that's, that's, that's really hard to do. Yeah. But it, it, as I understand it, they, you know, they, they make all the moisture into steam and they suck it out in a yep. vacuum and it's... Uh, it's well, you get the size, size of your members, they'll make it really hard to get all the moisture out of it. Fair enough. I mean, yeah. because it, as the you get further towards the center of the wood, the moisture coming out of it is that much harder to get out. Were you sort of half worried that you'd show up here and something wouldn't be right or it wouldn't? I mean, what's the process to make sure that we don't we don't do those kind of projects? Yeah, okay. No. All right. But but we get called when those types of projects happen. Can you come and help us? Right. Right. Yeah. What I guess so. 
structurally this was all engineered, right? You, you pick the member size and said this needs to be an eight by 14 or a six by eight or whatever it is. And then what about the joinery? How, how is that engineered? Well, actually the joinery kind of drives the sizes because you have a minimum cross section for bearing, a minimum cross section for shear, and then how all the connections go together. So you start from the connection and you extrapolate out from that. So okay. if you need X amount for bearing, that's going to dictate X amount of width. Okay. So you got to take into consideration how much you're notching, what your tenons are, and then you start to derive your your sizes. Okay. You looked them all over. Yes. Every time. I mean, and we got we got drawings from the, the the people who make this up in Bellingham. They made a drawing of every single piece of this, gave it to us. I reviewed it for dimensions. You reviewed it for structural integrity. Right. We made some changes, adjustments, and sent it back to them. And so, you know, a lot of eyes looking at this. Do you work with timber frames a lot, or you know, how did we you learn about this? We probably do two or three timber frame houses a year. Okay. So and I've, how did you learn about that? I mean, is that do you teach get taught that in engineering school, or is that just on the job? Or? It's a lot of it's common sense. It's just you know, you're you're primarily dealing with bearing on your wood, so your wood and compression longitudinally and uh, horizontally. You're dealing with shear across the the grain of the wood. So you just have to take those things into consideration in the, the minimalist point of view for how the connection works. Okay. Well, you say it's common sense, but I actually had a very difficult time finding a structural engineer who felt comfortable putting his seal of approval on a timber frame design. And so I, I was glad to find you and someone who's comfortable doing that. And I'm happy experience. to do the work. Yeah, no, it's good. Let's look at some of the joints, if we could. Okay. Because these joints here are traditional timber joints. Mm -hmm. It's all wood. The connection is pegged. There's, there's not a nail involved, right? right? There's no nail. There's no metal anywhere. Yeah, really strong, over, right? Very strong. Okay. Um, whereas I think in a few places we did have to resort to some metal. Yeah. Right. Like up here, I believe there's there's some metal. Right here, right? Right. So we have to so, so we have a through bolt that goes through here. Why why do we have to use metal in this location? This is fairly critical joint because the roof panels attached directly to this. Okay. And so what happens is you have a tension zone across here that wants to make it rack. And if it's going to rack, uh, you got to have some means of holding it together. There are traditional uh, timber frame joints to do. Uh, you could do a dovetail fit into the column to get it to work in tension. Okay. But usually for the size of forces, it's a fairly heroic thing to do. So 200 years ago, trees were as big well, around as 20 people. You have to kind of put it back into reference too, is that most of your timber frame construction of, of the no nails, no straps nature yeah. was done in New England and the Midwest where you necessarily didn't have large seismic forces. Right. And, and, and larger, you had larger wind forces, but again, in the whole of the structure, uh, those wind forces on a bent or on a frame is very minimal. Yeah. Whereas here, we, we're in an earthquake zone. Right. right. We're in an earthquake zone. So is a timber frame a good choice for an earthquake area or? Well, it really depends on what you're putting you on for fit? a skin. Yeah, okay. So I guess with the skin, we're, it, it's. It's a solid box. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Do you, with your own hands, make these timbers? I mean, you, mm -hmm. you, you do the raising and you do the fabrication. Yep. Yeah, we cool. do. We, uh, the only thing we use a computer for is to do our drawings. And then everything is hand cut in the shop. We don't use any CNC machines. What's a CNC machine? CNC machine is a, basically a computer activated router that will go along the length of a timber and cut all your joints based on your computer drawings. And wh why don't you use it? Um, Tradition? Yeah, really it is, yeah. and we'd be out of a job. <laughs> I see, right. It's, a, it's a really a different quality when you look yeah. at it, you know. It's, it's kind I, of an old, it's an old world craftsman thing, isn't it? Totally. Yeah. 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 It's been around for thousands of years. Yeah. And, and do you learn on the job, or is there, you know, is there like a school for this or somewhere? I think for the most part, all of us just learn by doing Okay. And getting hired, having some construction background. Some Anything different about this t timber frame? Actually, one of the things I liked about it was it's fairly traditional in style, but with some modern kind of uh, accents. Like what are those? Um, just the traditional details braces. on the show ends and the curved braces. and. Okay. Did you have to like turn in your old toolbox and get new tools? Or I mean, is it to wood is wood or is it? I've had to buy a lot more hand tools and I uh, don't use my framing nailer ever. I mean, I don't. I shouldn't say never, but um, yeah. There's. I mean, it's a departure. I mean, it's good that there's uh, some basic overlap and skills, but you know, uh, 
I'd say it's different enough that I, I did kind of have to relearn. Yeah. I've always been curious about how you get this perfectly fitted puzzle. We get called when those types of projects happen. Can you come and help us? It's an old world craftsman thing, isn't it? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. It's been around for thousands of years. Yeah.